Hi, this is Frankie, and we're going to continue working on our Pokédex using React. So, one of the major things about React is reusable components. And while this might not be a perfect example of a reusable component, someone else happened to make a Pokémon widget, which actually inspired this series of tutorials. Now, we don't know anything about how it's implemented, but if we look at their docs, and if you're making your own components, you usually want to document them, you can see that we create a Pokemon element and we give it a name which has a value. And that's really all there is to it. So I have included it in a script tag in our JS bin, so we should be able to simply render a Pokemon. Now, it uh, because we're not using our normal workflow where we might have uh, Browserify or something, because we're just working in JS bin. It's just going to export a global, so we're just going to fix that with a small uh, script tag here, and we're just going to say Pokemon image equals Pokemon. So now we'll be able to access it with the Pokemon image element instead of the Pokemon element which we use in here. So now I'm going to say we want to just display the first 10 results so that we don't have to download too many images. So in order to do that, we can just say this.props.data.slice 0 to 10. And that'll just give us numbers 1 through 10 in our list. And then here, we're going to replace this Pokemon with Pokemon image. And you can see we now have uh, what appears to be several images for, oh no, these are each of the, the stages of evolution. So now we're able to easily display Pokemon images using this third-party component. And now because that only took a few minutes, we're going to go on and add some extra stuff like maybe pagination, where we just want to display one at a time. And that brings us to the topic of state. So generally, these React components start at the top level, and then data passes down through them. However, components are allowed to store their own information, usually when it's just related to the display of things and not so much persistent data. So because pagination isn't really something that needs to be synced to the server or anything like that, we can just store this in state. So in order to use state, we have to give an initial state for our component. So if we create a new uh, property on this on this class called get initial get initial state which is a function that takes no arguments and returns an object and this object is going to be our state so return and we're going to say page is one or page is zero perhaps and we're going to want a way to update this state by saying go to the next page is all we're going to do in this video. And we're going to want to display things based on that state. So we're going to need to define another method that will let us set our state. So if we come in here and we say uh, we want a next page function, which all this is responsible for doing is calling this dot set state, which takes an, uh, an object, and we're going to say page is this dot state dot page plus one. So now when we run this next page function, we're going to call set state indirectly. And when React sees a set state, it's like, hey, something changed. We need to recompute our, our virtual representation of the DOM. So it's going to rerun this render method and all the render methods inside this render method. And then it's going to look at all of the elements that have, have changed and make the updates in the browser's DOM. So because it's only updating things that are changed, we don't really have to worry about optimizing. It does it for us. Uh, one other thing we're going to want to do is actually extract this out into uh, a separate class, I believe. Or no, we can probably leave this here for the moment. So we're going to want to wrap this in a div.
and in our div we're going to want to attach an event listener. So uh, this might seem a little bit, you know, 1990s, but we're going to type on click, and the case is important here. On click, this dot next page, and then just so we can see this little clicker, a little clearer, we're going to have a list element and it's just going to display this.state.page. And then when we click this, if it was working, let's see if we have any errors on the console. Nothing important. Uh, when we click on our div, we're not binding this. So I'm just going to, uh, up here, say var this.next, or var pa next page. As an added bonus, React auto binds our methods. However, the context of this is lost with map. So on click, it'll run the next function. And then you can see that this number updates. And we don't need to worry about why it updates, other than everything is updated when we call set state. So now that we have this, what we can do is instead of using our state to determine uh, what number to display, Instead, we can use our state to determine which of these to display. So instead of 0 through 10 as a static, we can say this.state.page, and then it'll go through 10. And you can see as the state increases, we get different elements, and then they're eventually phased out. So let's say we want this.state.page times 3 through this dot state dot page times three plus three. So we have these three, and then these three, then these three, then these three. And you can see we're already on our way to having a somewhat useful Pokedex. So one last thing we're going to do in this video, and that's refactor. A lot of times you want to refactor while you're writing your code. So rather than have all this junk in after our return, we can extract that out and give it a name such as Pokemon. And then up here, we can just say Pokemon equals this stuff, and then split it onto multiple lines for a little more clarity. There we go. And now we have some somewhat nice looking code that simply renders out a list of Pokemon and lets us set the state to paginate between these different sets of Pokemon. So we're going to continue with this in the next video and maybe add some, some more awesome user interface elements, maybe display some more of this data, which is height and weight and experience and all that stuff in a really awesome way. So I will see you then.